The Heavenly Life by James Allen. The righteous man. The righteous man is invincible. No enemy can possibly overcome or confound him, and needs no other protection than that of his own integrity and holiness. It is impossible for evil to overcome good. So the righteous man can never be brought low by the unrighteous, slander, envy, hatred, malice can never reach him, nor cause him any suffering. And those who try to injure him only succeed ultimately in bringing ignominy upon themselves. The righteous man, having nothing to hide. Committing no acts which require stealth, and harboring no thoughts and desires, which he would not like others to know, is a fearless and unashamed. His steps is firm, his body upright, it is a speech direct, without ambiguity. He looks everybody in the face. What can he fear? Any who. Wrongs now. How can he be ashamed before any who deceives now? And ceasing from all wrong, he can never be wronged. Ceasing from all deceit, he can never be deceived. The righteous man performing all his duties with a scrupulous diligence and living above sin is invulnerable. And every point, who has slain the inward enemies of virtue, can never be brought low by any outward enemy. Neither does he need to seek any protection against them. Righteousness being an all-sufficient protection. The unrighteous man is vulnerable at almost every point, living in his passions. The slave of prejudices, impulses, and ill-formed opinions, he is continually suffering as he imagines, at the hands of others. Slanders, attacks, and accusations of others cause him great suffering because they have a basis of truth in himself, and not having the protection of righteousness. Endeavors to justify and protect himself by resorting to retaliation and a specious argument, and even to subterfuge and de deceit. The partially righteous man is vulnerable at all those points where he falls short of righteousness. And should the righteous man fall from his righteousness, and give way to one sin? His invincibility is gone, for he has thereby placed himself where attacks, accusations, can just reach and injure him, because he has first injured himself. If a man suffers or is injured through the instrumentality of others, let him look to himself, and putting aside self-pity and self-defense. And found his own heart the source of all his woe. No evil can happen to the righteous man, who has cut off the source of evil himself, living in the all good, and abstaining from sin in thought, word, and deed. Whatever happens to him is good. Neither can any person, event, or circumstance cause him suffering. For the tyranny of circumstances is utterly destroyed for him, who has broken the bounds of sin. The suffering, the sorrowing, the weary, and broken-hearted, ever seek a sorrowless refuge, a haven of perpetual peace. Let such fly to the refuge of the righteous life. 
them come now and enter the heaven of the sinless state, for sorrow cannot overtake the righteous. Suffering cannot reach him who does not waste in self-seeking. It's a spiritual substance. And he can be afflicted by weariness and unrest whose heart is at peace with all.